Good morning, everybody. My name is Barry Schwartz, and this is the Search Buzz Video Recap. Today is Friday, November 15th, and this is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable at seroundtable.com. We got the Google November 2024 core update it was announced on Monday, and it's still rolling out, so a lot to discuss over there. Google AI overviews is testing hyperlinks, a ton of SEO news and user interface te tests, Google ad news, AdSense, and maps, and so much more. So definitely stay tuned. You don't want to miss this one. And this video is sponsored by Wix. Wix Studio. Do you know that Wix Studio has SEO courses? It's live now. You can actually go ahead and watch them. It covers topics like keyword research, technical SEO, local SEO, SEO reporting, link building, and so much more. It's from some of the names that you love in this industry. So definitely check it out at wix.com slash SEO slash learn slash course. Thank you, Wix, for sponsoring. Okay, so the Google November core update started to roll out on Monday afternoon, November 11th, I believe, at around 3.30 or so p.m. Eastern time. Um, we knew this update was coming. We've been talking about it for a while. Google, interestingly enough, announced specifically two things with this update, mostly around what sounds like helpful content. They said this update is designed to continue our work to improve the quality of our search results by showing more content that people generally uh, find useful and less content that feels like it was made just to perform well in search. Seems like a helpful content note. Um, again, this could update Google. A lot of people are, t you know, this could update Google Discover things. This could update Google Search, Google AI overviews, um, feature snippets and all that type of stuff. Um, so I have a whole post about this update, what we're seeing and so forth. And then yesterday I posted another story on the Google Core update where we are starting to see the signs of this update actually taking into coming into a play. It seems like right now most people aren't seeing it, um, but those that are seeing it are seeing significant and massive changes to their rankings, like you would with any core update if you were hit by it. Um, it does seem like this morning, um, I wrote about this yesterday, it seemed like a lot less fewer people are chattering about it, but this morning it seems like the chatter is starting to spike up, but the tools themselves are still very, very, very calm. It's like the reverse of what you would expect from the tools. The tools are like calming down, whereas previously, the, like before the core update, weeks and weeks before the core update, every single day, the tools were pretty heated. Um, so all the tools are pretty calm, but Glenn Gabe shared a lot of uh, charts showing specifically sites that were hit by previous core updates, um, some that were hit by helpful content update that are now showing recoveries or big swings down again. So significant movies with those sites, um, other sites as well. So it's not alone and there's chatter at Webmaster World and different sites as well, my site about this, but the tools again are pretty calm. So it's pretty interesting to see that. Um, so definitely you're, if you are noticing changes, you are definitely not alone. Google is testing um, hyperlinks, real hyperlinks in the Google AI overview instead of those paper clips. This is spotted by Sachin Patel. Here's a screenshot of that. Again, these are real hyperlinks and that should lead to more clicks to your website. Uh, John Mueller from Google um, went ahead and kind of cautioned using Google Trends too much, relying on Google Trends too much for content ideas. He said it's easy to go overboard with tools like these, and he also cautioned about using it. He says, I do want to caution that it's easy to go overboard with tools like these. You don't have to create pages to cover every possible related search term. It's important that the content which you publish actually um, adds value to the web overall, and it doesn't just repeat what others have to say. Be selective. Focus on your own expertise. Focus on your user, users that are likely to be relevant to your business. Again, I always found that it was weird that Google was posting all these Google Trends topics, which is useful and so forth for many publishers, uh, but it gives many people, it encourages many people to go down the wrong, wrong avenue when it comes to creating content for their users. And finally, Google mentioned it, which is good, but again, they have all these videos about this and so forth. So it's interesting, but again, it is what it is. And John Mueller again offers some other SEO advice around um, how SEOs seem to over-focus on URL structure, so much so that they will change your URLs and cause a lot of other issues with SEO by changing the URLs. Um, and John Mueller said, often SEOs over-focus on URL structure. It's, it, um, if the context of your pages isn't clear from the onset, I guess, text on the page, then your URL structure isn't really gonna help fix that. Um, there is URL structure is important when it comes to adult content, but outside of that, um, it, it really isn't that important. Uh, but again, you could do whatever you want, whatever you think is best for your, your folks. And then John Mueller posted one more SEO advice tip was around version history pages. And it basically the same advice that you would, you would give around reoccurring events like conferences and so forth, where you should keep the original URL for the, mo for the most recent version history. 
um, let's say 2.0, uh, AdWords editor 2.8 is out. Here's a version history page. Make that the, the prime URL, the, the main URL. And then for the archive versions like 2.7, 2.6, 2.5, uh, you could create other URLs with those variations to archive those previous things. That's the same advice that Google gave around conferences and so forth for their conferences that happen every quarter, every year, or whatever it might be. Um, similar advice there. Then I spotted this new uh, SEO, newish SEO topic um, from Glenn Gay where he said, he, he showed a, a case, a small case study where the, the words on a specific page that he was tracking for a, maybe a client, I don't even know who, um, basically was the, the terms they use were changing. Um, like, for example, I'm not, I'm, not sure if, I'm not sure specifically the example here, but let's say I used to say I used to tape something. Uh, nobody really says that. They say, I'm going to record something. There's no really tapes anymore. Um, so maybe the person went ahead and updated the content saying, I'm going to record, uh, this is a great recorder. It records the great videos and so forth. And then um, instead of saying record, they said tape. So now the person went ahead and changed it to record to make it more modern or whatever it might be. And then the, the ranking stabilized. There's a chart of that. So I found that interesting. And, um, and uh, Darth uh, on, on X went ahead and said, I, uh, he calls this term drift, where the terms drift over time. And you have to go ahead and update the content to match what people are actually using for terms. Super interesting. Figured I'd share that as well. Google now supports in the image search about this image feature, the CTPA metadata. That basically is a way for Google to understand the metadata to say, hey, this um, image was either created using AI, it was edited using Photoshop, or it was using, uh, uploaded using a uh, camera. Um, so that's something Google talked about months ago and now it actually supported. It's supported by other social media platforms as well. Um, and I think it's automatically pulled from photo editors and so and photo systems as well. So it's just metadata that's in there. Um, I haven't seen it live yet, but supposedly it is live. Google Maps is um, launching this new, launched this new feature called Products Nearby um, directly in Google Maps. So Products Nearby you've probably seen in Google Search and um, in the local results and so forth. But now it's available when you open up the Google Maps app. If you do a search for like sweater or something, it's going to actually show you products nearby, uh, which is pretty cool to have. Google Merchant Center has added this new sales event promotion type. This is spotted by Dario Zoani, um, who posted on LinkedIn that, that this is a new Merchant Center feature, which basically highlights a general sale happening to your store on different Google surfaces. Events don't show up in product listings for both, uh, for both um, organic and ads. Um, so this is a pretty interesting feature. So definitely take a look at this sales promotion right before the holidays. It should be pretty useful for those using Merchant Center. Uh, Brody Clark spotted this and posted on SERPs alerts is this new sales um, agent um, in Google search. It's like a sales assistant. You're talking to an AI bot, which helps you find product on a specific retailer's website. You just chat with it. It pops up right in the Google search results. This is, that seems to be a limited test. Here's a, a video of that in action. Um, again, it's super, super interesting and weird, uh, but it is, seems to be live. It does seem to be live for some sites. I can't replicate this myself, uh, but it's super interesting. Uh, Google uh, announced and sent out emails to advertisers that they're up to update, updating their customer match policy uh, and warning the uh, users and advertisers not to harm their users or else they'll be go ahead and like removed and not able to use those features. Customer match basically is a way for you to upload your, your customer list. Some people could abuse it by just taking anybody's email addresses and putting it there. And effective January 13, 2025, this new policy will come into effect where it says if you create, a, um, if you cause harm to users or create poor user experience, they may go ahead and stop you from letting you use Google Ads or these features in Google Ads. So keep that in mind. Of course, nobody wants to do that. Google Ads is also testing subheadings under the main headings um, of the title links of this results. This is spotted by both Anthony Higman and Jonathan, Cor uh, uh, Jonathan Cortrell. Um, nice find there. Here's some screenshots of that. It is interesting to see that. It looks kind of weird, but it is what it is. Google's also showing now for Google Shopping ads, both seller and product ratings. Seller ratings are basically how their overall retailer is doing and how many ratings they got versus the product itself. It's pretty useful. Could, could be a little confusing because you're seeing two ratings on the same listing, uh, but they're for two different types of things. One is for the product itself and one is for the actual seller. Um, Google Ads has opened up its election ads again, um, starting actually last Monday. Um, they paused it right after the elections um, closed because they didn't want to have misinformation uh, about the elections in the ads, so they paused that. And also, I don't have a post about this, but Google will pause some ad um, election ads in the UK um, and in Europe um, some, sometime next year, which they posted about um, yesterday on their Google blog. Google Ads Editor version 2.8 is out, so you could, um, you could go ahead and get that. It has a lot of cool new features, of course. Um, Google AdSense is launching or has launched uh, new collapsible anchors. These collapsible anchors basically make you click 
uh, X, um, for a user to actually X out the ad, no, not just once, but multiple times. First, collapse it, and then remove the whole ad, which is kind of super annoying, and they're actually gonna default all Anchor ads, so anybody using Anchor ads to this new format um, coming up soon, so you have like 30 days to turn it off or so, and otherwise it's gonna be turned on automatically, and it might annoy your users. It's just funny that AdSense keeps doing what Google search team tells you not to do to annoy your users, so. <clears throat> Keep that in mind. Final, uh, not finally, but Google also AdSense um, launched new first-party cookie controls, and they're uh, that are changing the way that they actually handle that. So those first-party co uh, cookie controls are changing to make it simpler. I, I would look into this because it seems like something's changing big time, and you might want to take a look at that. There's new information about that on Search and Roundtable. And finally, um, Bing has launched new auto suggest interfaces with now rich cards directly in the actual rich entity cards directly in the auto suggest. Um, more images, richer images, larger images, and more search features like popular searches and so forth. This is, this is actually note, uh, posted by Jordi Ribas, um, the head of Microsoft Search um, at Microsoft. In any event, thanks so much for listening to the Search Buzz video recap. My name again is Barry Schwartz, and this is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable, SEOroundtable.com over the past week. Everyone have a great, safe weekend, and thanks again to Wix for sponsoring. Deeply appreciate it. Bye-bye.